Welcome to the Terra Technica channel. My name is Michael, and today we will uncover a taboo subject of the Viking Age, waste management and personal hygiene. We'll explore how the Vikings adapted to extreme frosts and the engineering solutions that allowed their growing settlements to function. We will also debunk the myth that Vikings were merely filthy barbarians who neglected their self-care. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and enjoy the story. Thanks for watching. The wind bites, not just freezing the skin, but stripping the warmth directly from the bone. It is 40 degrees below zero. You are 500 miles from any familiar civilization, deep within the north settlements of Greenland. The sun has been gone for weeks. In this relentless landscape, every calorie, every minute of warmth is precious. The instinct is to stay huddled deep inside the earth-insulated longhouse, sharing heat with livestock and kin. But the human body, regardless of engineering or willpower, demands release. This is the oldest, most unavoidable survival necessity, waste management. If the simple act of relieving oneself takes more than five minutes outside the structure, the risk of severe frostbite or hypothermia skyrockets. The problem for the Vikings was twofold. How do you design a waste disposal system that maintains warmth, prevents disease, and functions year-round when the ground beneath you is solid permafrost? Their solution was a complex balance of architectural integration, specialized pits, and the strategic use of extreme cold itself as a preserving agent. For Vikings living in temporary camps or aboard the longships that defined their empire, the method was necessarily crude. At sea, waste was jettisoned directly into the wake, relying on the constant flow of salt water for dilution. In coastal long forts, temporary fortified camps, archaeological findings suggest the simplest technology, a latrine plank suspended over the high tide line, allowing the ocean to act as the primary cleanser. But when settlements became permanent, particularly the thriving urban centers like Dublin, Jorvik, York, or Hadeby, sophisticated infrastructure became essential to avoid self-poisoning. Here, documentary evidence and structural ruins point toward the widespread use of deep, wood-lined cesspits. These pits were often located outside the main habitation area, but sometimes accessed via short roofed conduits extending from a dedicated latrine corner within the longhouse. This interior latrine was fundamentally a hole cut into a thick wooden bench situated over a drop shaft. Crucially, these systems required constant management. Historical evidence suggests that these cesspits were not simply forgotten holes, but engineered chambers lined with materials like wickerwork or timber designed to contain the liquefaction and prevent immediate leaching into the shallow local water table. The removal process, performed by designated workers or slaves, involved periodically emptying the pits, often using specialized buckets or scoops. The waste, the night soil, was then mixed with peat, ash, or straw to stabilize it, transforming the raw effluent into rich fertilizer for local fields, closing the nutrient loop that sustained their fragile communities. However, the deepest test of Norse ingenuity came not in the temperate cities of Britain, but in the hostile climate of the North Atlantic. The Greenland settlements, established by Eric the Red around 985 AD, presented sanitation challenges unlike any other Viking territory. For much of the year, the ground was locked in ice. Digging permanent deep cesspits in the solid rock and permafrost was impossible on a community scale. The archaeological consensus suggests that in Greenland and parts of Iceland, the Norse adapted by embracing the midden as their primary waste management system. The midden, often mischaracterized as a simple trash heap, was in fact a highly structured strategic deposition site built up over generations, usually positioned just outside the longhouse door. Unlike a cesspit, the midden handled both household waste, ash, food scraps, bone, broken pottery, and human waste. The cold environment was vital to this system. In extreme sub-zero temperatures, bacterial activity slows almost to a halt. Waste materials were not rapidly decomposed. They were frozen and preserved, stabilizing the pile and mitigating the immediate danger of pathogens spreading rapidly through water or air. 
The Vikings built the midden in layers, alternating deposits of organic material and stabilizing substances like peat ash, stones, and sand. This layering achieved several goals. It absorbed moisture, reduced odor, and built up a large insulating mound. Crucially, in many Norse settlements, the sheer bulk of the midden grew so large over time that it served a secondary, structural purpose, sometimes acting as an insulating barrier against the prevailing winter winds, protecting the primary longhouse structure. But the management of biological waste was only half the battle for survival. High retention survival requires effective hygiene. The common misconception of the Viking as an unkempt barbarian is contradicted by overwhelming archaeological and historical evidence. Personal cleanliness was not just a social norm, it was a status symbol and a survival mechanism. Viking graves and urban excavations consistently yield an array of intricate grooming tools, tweezers, ear spoons, small knives for nail care, and most famously, highly decorative bone and antler combs. These combs were essential for controlling lice and fleas, parasites which, if left unchecked in the close confines of a longhouse, could spread typhus or other catastrophic fevers that would quickly wipe out a small, isolated community. Written accounts from external sources, particularly the observations of the relatively fastidious Anglo-Saxons, noted the Norse obsession with cleanliness. It was noted that the Danes and Northmen washed, combed their hair, and changed their clothes with noticeable regularity. The practice of bathing, specifically, was formalized. Old Norse terms indicate Saturday was laugardagr, or washing day a tradition so entrenched it survives in the modern Scandinavian languages. This regular washing was often facilitated by the bathstofa, or bathhouse. These were typically small, separate structures designed to be intensely heated, creating a high humidity environment analogous to a modern sauna or steam room. While direct soap technology was rudimentary, made from lye, potassium hydroxide derived from wood ash, mixed with animal fat, the intense heat, coupled with physical scrubbing and the use of natural abrasives, was highly effective at sanitizing the skin and clothing. The connection between waste management and personal hygiene is absolute, and archaeology provides the final, undeniable proof. Scientists studying paleofeces, fossilized human waste, excavated from Viking cesspits, particularly in York, have unlocked detailed biological data. These ancient samples reveal the core diet of the inhabitants, grains like rye and barley, often consumed as porridge or bread, alongside significant quantities of fish bones and domestic animal proteins. But the analysis also exposed a harsh reality. Despite their advanced planning and dedicated hygiene practices, the Vikings were heavily burdened by internal parasites. High concentrations of whipworm and roundworm eggs are common findings. This indicates that while their efforts to manage waste were sophisticated for the era, the fundamental challenge of ensuring truly potable drinking water and preventing cross-contamination in densely packed urban environments remained an insurmountable obstacle. The sophisticated systems offered protection, but never total immunity. The story of Viking waste management is not one of medieval filth, but of pragmatic, determined engineering born of necessity. Faced with the extreme variables of Arctic cold, oceanic voyages, and the complex demands of urban life, they developed stratified middens, dedicated bathhouses, and structured cesspits. Their ingenuity ensured that even in environments where nature fought every effort toward permanence, human dignity and survival could endure the inevitable biological necessities. The Vikings proved that mastering the most intimate aspects of survival is the first step toward conquering a new world.